All right, welcome back everybody to Flatirons Tuning. We're here in the shop. Got Viet with us uh, because Viet and I have been having to put together a plan for the Pikes Peak car. As we're recording this, it is now, uh, boy, we're past the middle of February. We've got a yep. week and a half of February left. And the good news is we got accepted to the Pikes Peak Hill Climb for 2024. That's great. Um, but now it's time to like really put on the focus because we've got basically three weeks, or sorry, three months and two weeks, give or take, until we start testing on the mountain. And we have a lot of changes that we need to make and want to make. And so now we've got to really dive into it. We, we got distracted a little bit by the rally car a couple yeah. weeks ago. So we had to spend a couple weeks doing that. And so now we've got to really kind of focus on this. This is now top priority. We've got the majority of what we have to do laid out here. So V and I was thinking we could just kind of, let's, let's, let's look at everything we got. Yep. And talk through why, why we're doing it or what we're doing. So over here, and we've, we've talked about this already, is our sequential transmission. So this, this came back to us, built by Rally Spec. It's ready to go in the car. Uh, it's the, assemble Modena, or the assembled Modena sequential transmission in the six-speed case. So now that has to go in the car. So that seems pretty easy, pretty straightforward. The easiest part of this whole thing is this guy. I haven't even talked about this yet, but we're also switching out the rear diff. So we're putting in a Modena rear differential as well. Um, we'll have to give you guys some insight into that in another video as to why we're doing that. But so now we've got both of these things to go in the car. But Viet, what are some of the key considerations that we need to take into or need to factor in when we're putting the sequential in? So with this stuff, this is going to be pretty much just like a transmission and diff swap. Um, the difficulty would be is this stuff right here, the, the shifter, shifter. Um, yeah. trying to get the rod to the right length, making sure the shifter sits in the right spot so we can actually get some actuation in it. And also getting the strain gauge and all the sensors and stuff working. Um, but that in itself yeah, should be simple. Because the kit is for the car, that should be reasonably straightforward. Yep. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, again, with the sequential, because the shift movement is, is just forward and back and that's it. So it's, it's a little bit different. It's got to you know, reach the, the mechanism on the transmission to do that. But yeah, the, the electronics is, is going to be the biggest challenge. Yeah. Um, because there's, there's a sensor in the transmission to, to hopefully wire into the Haltech and tell us what gear we're in. That will be great if, we, if that gets to work. Um, but then the big thing is that strain gauge, which is going to be incorporated with the shift knob so that when we're going to shift, computer knows it does what it has to do so we've got to get all this in but then we have to get all the electronics working and then we have to go to the dyno to get the car programmed to do all the stuff all the magic wizardry that it needs to do so that we can actually just bang through gears and and, and go real fast so there's a, there's like the mechanical side of putting it in but then there's a whole electronics yeah. component to this so there's going to be a you know multiple installments in getting this all in and getting it to work and then there's also something that we don't have here is a transmission cooler yeah yeah, and, and kind of working through, you know, best steps to keep a sequential reliable or, or really any six speed uh, in a race car. Keeping the transmission fluid at, at an optimal temperature is a big piece of that. They tend to run hot. So we're going to put in a cooler. Well, we've got to figure out how we're going to drive it, where we're going to put the cooler, how we're going to mount it to the car, how we're going to get air to it. But got to get the transmission in first. So yep. transmission in, and then we can kind of work all that out. We've got some ideas, probably going to be somewhere towards the back of the car, but yeah. So there's, that's another wrinkle with this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so then let's move on and talk about our, our front splitter here. Um, I don't know, uh, I mean, it looks, it looks okay. Um, do you think we can keep using it? No, no, I don't think so. This, this will Bet. not, as they say, buff right out. Um, last year, uh, Scott hit a hay bale, um, snapped off one of the corners of the, of the the, few, or the, the front uh, splitter spun off, got run over by a bunch of cars. Some of the guys that hit it signed it for him, which is nice. That's a nice touch. But that's, that's the end of, of the life of this splitter, so we have to start all over again. Yes. And that brings us to, to this stuff. We, we got in a whole package of goodies from Professional Awesome. Walk me through what, what, our, <sighs> what our plan is here. The uprights and mounting for the new splitter itself. Yeah, and then these ducts to hopefully, if we have room on the splitter, once we make the template and all that, um, we can incorporate this to kind of give us a little more downforce and more make downforce more efficiently. 
Yeah, it's funny, this, this splitter was built at the time when the car was built, which at this point is, gosh, 11, 12 years ago? Oh yeah. It, crazy long time ago. Um, and since you know this was designed, th there's been a lot more developments as far as diffusers. Professional Awesome has these options. They have these small diffusers, large diffusers, and it's, it's now well known that if, if you put that in the front splitter, these can help give you more downforce without just using the physical size of the splitter. Yeah. So it's an, op it's an option for us to kind of get more current and update the, the splitter. Um, we're not going to use all these. It would be great if we could. I just don't think there's enough real estate. Um, so we're going to try and use the big diffusers first, and then we'll, we'll switch to the small diffusers if we have to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a whole new design for the front splitter. Um, What's cool is, like, Professional Awesome with these, like, uprights, they make them for the chassis. Yeah. So they've got a bunch for different chassis, for Subarus, Hondas, whatever. But, yeah, um, they've figured it out and made it easy for us. They're, they're making more and more direct bolt-on yeah. applications. Yeah. yeah. So this, this basically bolts right to the, to the front of the frame rail and then attaches to basically the, the upright and their quick-release system. Oh, yeah. So yep. um, the idea with the front splitter is that you know, we can put it on, run it, then when we don't need it anymore, pull the quick release, drop it off the car, load it on the trailer, that sort of thing. So we're really looking forward to being able to use the Professional Awesome um, kit because that, that figuring out a way to attach the splitter and have a quick release, that was, that was a real challenge um, that the guys that built the car figured out, a reasonable system, but it was kind of troublesome. Um, so hopefully this will be a much, we have the opportunity to do something that's a little bit more reliable, more yeah. robust. Um, so we're looking forward to that and just getting some, some good front downforce back on the car. The turbo, we have to replace as well. Yeah. It's a little tired, worn out. Um. Yeah, so that's is in the process of taking everything apart um, to you know, put the transmission in and whatnot. We're gonna basically replace the turbo. Yeah. We fortunately have a backup there. It, this is one of the things with these race cars is like, so this is, this is the plan. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are the things that we need to do and want to do and then the guarantee is that we're going to find like six other things that we now have to do as we're going through everything because, you know, oh, look at this, it's worn, or this, this is broken, or, or why is this even in here? That's just kind of normal yeah. kind of race car stuff. So that's, I guess that's the initial plan. And so now you can stay <laughs> tuned as we start to tear everything apart and find out and discover all the other things that we've broken that we also have to replace. Yeah, we'll have fun. Yes. Come with us. Come with us. <laughs> it's going to be a journey. Come along. All right, now cut to the 18 montage. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've seen the, the thrash montage of Viet putting the transmission in the car, the sequential is in the car, we've got the rear diff in the car, and that's just the beginning. Yes. So, so Viet, where are we at? What are, what are the next steps? So right now, we need to figure out shifter, shifter position. I think we got dialed in. It's just more the location of the rod and how far we want to go in and out, because it is adjustable. We can, yeah. So basically we, we've, we've got the rod sized and then there's about an inch or so of extra adjustment that comes with the shift rod. So the shift placement will change depending on the height of the driver, the length of the arm um, and the position of the seat. So we've got some room to play with. We think we've got that zero down. Well, so that's, that's kind of the easy part. We need to get yeah. the shift knob attached to the shift stock, which is being done right now two different threads. So we've got a strain gauge in the shift knob, but it was a different thread than what the shift stock is. And so the strain gauge is what's gonna actually sense when the driver grabs the shift knob and shifts so that the ECU can do what it needs to do, but so we've gotta get that attached. But the bigger problem is down here with the transmission. Now that it's in, we have to route the cooling and the wiring. Oh yes, fun things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, gone through a few ideas on routing 
and kind of like core. Um, we thought about routing it to the back or the front. Um, the yeah. back would be the easiest in the straight shot. The front is a little more complicated um, just because we have already so many coolers up there. Um, the, the advantage of the front is that if we have room up front, and we'll, we'll drop the car here in a second, we'll show you, um, then you get a lot more direct airflow over the cooler, which means the cooler works better. If we remote it, uh, remotely mounted back where the fuel tank was, because we're running a fuel cell, so we've got this kind of space at the back of the car, the cooler would be protected, but there's not a lot of airflow over the cooler, so we'd have to like do some ducting to try and make sure we've got adequate airflow. Um, and anything under the car, there's always a possibility of like gravel and rocks and stuff hitting it. So like you can damage the fins on the cooler, that's not a great thing. But worst case scenario, if it ever would like puncture the cooler and you know, create a leak, that's that's a that's a bad day for everybody. Yeah. So let's um, what do you think? Maybe drop the car and let's look at the front and talk about what we've got going on there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now we're at the front of the car. Let's talk about what's going on here. Um, basically, this is we haven't changed anything yet. So this is as the car was. So we've got our front mounted intercooler here. This is currently where we have the oil cooler. Uh, for the, the engine oil cooler set up. But we're looking at options as far as what we can do to incorporate a transmission cooler up front. So what are your thoughts, Viet? What do you think our options are? So we've got a big space up top above the intercooler. That'd probably be the most optimal um, as far as space goes, or we can go on the other side of the bumper. Yeah. But I think this would be better or the other option we had was your idea of swapping the dry sump cooler up here so it can be larger, keep right. oil temps down even further, and then using a, the trans, that, that bracket for the transmission cooler. Yeah, we put, our, we put the engine oil cooler here because at the time when we were fabbing all this up, we were still having overheating problems, so we, we didn't want to put anything in front of the radiator that we didn't have to. Yeah. So this, this cooler utilizes one of the side vents in the bumper, um, and we actually are ducting uh, the left front brake duct through the cooler and then out through the, the vent on the bumper. And it works okay. We would definitely like to keep the oil cooler than what we have been with this setup so far. Um, so that was one of the wants that we had this year was to yeah. improve cooling, you know, give us more cooling capacity. Um, since our last test on track, the, the cooling systems work better than it ever has before. So I'm, I'm less concerned now about putting a cooler in front of the radiator. And so that's where I think it makes sense to move the oil cooler for the engine to the front of the radiator and then just reuse this location for the transmission. Yeah. Because based on this location and the frame rail and everything like that, the lines coming up from the transmission, it should be reasonably straightforward to get the, the cooler lines from the transmission over to this spot. And we already have this fancy bracket and all the ducting and everything to go with it. Um, so that's currently the plan for that. Now we're going to start probably mocking some stuff up and, and thinking it through, but that, that's currently the plan. Now there's, there's other reasons that the bumper is off yet. So what, what else are we doing up here? Oh yeah. So we talked before that we we're going to redesign the split or we need to rede redesign the splitter. So we can, we're going to start working on, um, mocking up like the uprights yeah. and then trying to lay out like splitter design to see where everything lays out. Yeah, we've got to figure out how to attach the splitter, and yeah. then we have to decide what shape the splitter needs yep. to be, and then we have to actually make the thing. So there's a lot of steps there involved, and got to get moving on that too. So that's going to be kind of one of the next things, like if it takes a little while to get you know the, the transmission cooler stuff in, we need a pump, the yeah. cooler, the lines. Um, we're going to move over to the, uh, to the splitter, but also let's just mentioned the, the turbo because that's that's coming as well correct that still has to be done but that's pretty straightforward it's yeah. so cool we're just putting in a new core to the turbo yeah. so yeah. basically rebuilding it um just give it a freshen it up a little bit so that's where we're at and that's the plan for going forward so you're going to see some pieces of all this in the next next iteration so thanks so much for watching thanks for your support as always um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and head over to flatirons.tuning.com. That is the best way to support this content so we can keep coming back and making this stuff for you. So um, thanks again for watching. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.